When we talk about why metals look and behave like metals, we sometimes talk about a sea of electrons. That's because while the heavy nuclei stay put in a solid metal, they're surrounded by electrons that easily flow all over the place. And this accounts for all of these metallic properties. That's what's up next on PS100. Whether it travels through the air in a thunderstorm, the circuits in your smartphone, or power lines down your street, electrical currents are just flowing charged particles. The more freedom electrons have to move around in a material, the more readily the material will conduct electricity. Since the electrons in a metal are negatively charged and always moving around between large numbers of nuclei, all it takes is an electromagnetic field to get them flowing in the same direction, and you've got an electric current. And because those electrons are so free to move around, metal also conducts heat very well. When one end of a metal piece heats up, the electrons quickly carry that microscopic kinetic energy throughout the piece. When it comes to a metal's high melting temperature, you know what they say, nuclei that play together stay together. To melt anything, you've got to excite the particles with thermal energy until they break free from the bonds holding them in place. And since each nucleus in a metal shares electrons with many other nuclei, it takes a lot of heat to break all those bonds. Metals are also highly malleable and ductile, which means you can pound them flat or pull them into thin wires without breaking them. Again, it's the free-flowing electrons that give metals these properties. When you hit or squish non-metals, which keep electrons and nuclei in relatively rigid positions, you're likely to push those positive charges up against each other, and that'll break them apart as like charges repel one another. But in metals, negatively charged, freely moving electrons act like a lubricant in between the positively charged nuclei, slipping around each nucleus and reducing the repulsive forces between them. To understand how metals interact with light, you need to remember that light is made up of little bundles of electromagnetic energy called photons. The color of the light depends on the energy of the photon. When a photon hits an atom, if the photon energy matches the amount of energy needed for an electron to jump to the next possible energy level, the atom will absorb the photon and the electron will jump up to that level. That's actually why materials have certain colors. They absorb only photons of certain colors, which affects what colors we see. In nonmetals, only a few empty orbitals are available, so only a few photons get absorbed. The others ricochet or pass right through, so those materials look pretty transparent. In contrast, since metal atoms share electrons extensively, the quantum mechanical rules allow those electrons to be at just about every possible energy level. So metal atoms can absorb photons of virtually all colors in the visible spectrum, and some ultraviolet and infrared too. Since photons hitting metal are much more likely to meet their match and get absorbed, metals are opaque. What happens after those photons get absorbed by the metal? They get spit back out when electrons relax into lower energy orbitals. Again, in atoms of most nonmetals, only certain colors correspond to the right energies for this to happen. But in a metal, there are empty orbitals to allow photons of essentially any color to be emitted. Those emitted, reflected photons are what make metals shiny and lustrous. If the electrons were less mobile, they'd be less likely to absorb and radiate whatever light they encountered. That's it for this episode, but you'll find more science and research opportunities for BYU undergrads in the description below.